Come now, Reaper isn't complicated. You look up a graphic for the opener and repeat a meme about it all under the morning sun. Do you really want a guide from me? <laughs> dear oh dear, what was it? The memes, the novelty, or the droning tutorials? Oh, it doesn't matter. Tonight, the chairman joins the hunt. Greetings, travelers. Yes, it's me, Resident Evil, Reaper Hater. It's okay if you like Reaper. Some people like Match 3 games, pouring milk before their cereal, or playing... Machinist. There's probably a bigger overlap between those groups than I want to admit. As the saying goes, you reap what you sow. In this case, we are sowing buttons and reaping mediocre DPS. See, I got a lot of practice from Stardew Valley the last time I used footage from this specific day and haven't played the game since. Hope you're keeping up to date on all my lore. I was only addicted to several other games at the time to distract myself from my distractions. I even made a Catherine video that was too hot for YouTube and needed to be censored. I'm not salty. Now just because I hate the gameplay and think Reaper is boring doesn't mean anything. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion and is equally valid. Besides, it's one of the three new jobs introduced in current expansion alongside Sage and Summoner. The only time you'll hear anything out of me is if they make other melee DPS like Reaper. Insert Chitin comment here. How does Reaper perform in the meta game? Please don't talk to me about the meta. It is so fucking boring I would rather hear about your 401k. What is Reaper actually about? Having a billion particle effects. Just the act of trying to tie your shoelace causes a red cum shot and a magnitude 10 earthquake to appear. Whoever is on the effects team, give them a raise. Reaper probably has 10 times the animation budget of all of A Realm Reborn. Unlike Dark Knight though, we don't channel our inner darkness, we subcontract that part out to the void. I always wanted to be a corporate overlord. Maybe Reaper really is evil. But I don't think I need someone else to tap into my unrelenting fury. It's just trying so hard to look cool while also being so uninteresting. That's why it's for normies. You won't have to worry though, because I'm still the biggest basic bitch of them all. I play as a cat girl samurai for crying out loud. I'm just astounded that half the GCDs cause the screen to pulse and throb. I can feel all the screen shake straight in my bones. It makes pressing these buttons feel so... right. So contrary to what you might think, I like everything else about Reaper from the job story to the long, hard, girthy, and thick, rotted sights that they wield. Can't wait to use one of my Ultima totems that I haven't discarded yet on a shiny sickle. Ultimate weapons are a scam. Alright, enough joking around, time to get tutorialized. Reaper is extremely intuitive, but also simultaneously gated by a bunch of evil people who don't want you to know the secrets to getting big, juicy parses. If other people knew the secret, they might start to think it's as easy as Samurai and you can't get much easier than that. Who the fuck are these people, Chair? Isn't it obvious? It's the government. Which government? You don't get it. THE government. The government behind every single That's country. real nice, Chair. Here's a bottle of gin and some vanilla fan art to keep you occupied. Let's start with the basics, also known as here's the timestamp to skip me droning on about shit that all you good noodles already knew about. Simply press your sick 1-2-3 combo to build up red. Each button gives you 10 red and has no positional requirement. It's not gonna stop me from pressing true north out of reflex when I have to move in front of the boss for a mechanic. Once you have at least 50 red, you can spend it to weave bloodstock and press a blue button. Uh, actually, it's only called bloodstock the first time that you use it in combat because bloodstock changes into unveiled gallows and unveils gibbet after you press Yeah, the yeah, yeah, it's the same button. You do have to follow up bloodstock immediately with either gibbet or gallows or you lose it, making it one big combo action. Your first choice of gibbet or gallows is completely up to you, so try not to be too indecisive. Although Gallows is a rear positional and Gibbet is a flank positional, so you probably want to use whichever is easiest to hit first. Although, say it with me now. Hitting positional is much, much easier than many players think. Target is right on the right of the open part of the back is the rear and just outside of that is the flank. That is the flank. Thank you. The last core piece of basic filler is Shadow of Death. It makes you do more damage, and just like Nisi, you want to keep it alive. 
is like a dot. <gasps> the dark soul over time? Haha, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Cora Lionheart on Twitter for letting me steal your joke. Retroactively. Feel free to also follow me on there so I can steal your jokes too and make a tweet once a month. <clears throat> The Dark Soul over time isn't like a traditional dot because even though it lasts for 30 seconds, you can add 30 seconds to it with a maximum of 60. Thus, as long as you didn't waste any of the 30 seconds added, you can use it whenever you want, even if it has like 29 seconds remaining. And for only two payments of $19.99, you can't do anything with that because I'm not selling anything. Now there are a few other parts to the core of Reaper. Soul Slice is a button that you strictly press every 30 seconds and make sure that you have room for the 50 red pills it gives you until level 78, where you can hold two charges of it and you don't have to be as strict with the timing anymore. That's a good use of all the effort I was putting in earlier. And you also have Gluttony, which is exactly like Bloodstock, but you get to press two blue buttons afterwards instead of one. If it was one more than that, it would be inner release. Gluttony only happens every 60 seconds, and you better be strict with the timing on that button because it surprisingly might not matter as much as you think. Every time you press Gibbet or Gallows, you get 10 blue, which you can spend 50 of on Hyper Shroud. To live fast, eat ass, Gandhi. This will turn Gibbet and Gallows into Speedy Gibbet and Speedy Gallows, but don't be fooled. There are no positional requirements on these augmented buttons, who would be stupid enough to intuitively think that they would have the same positional requirements as the buttons that they replaced when they first picked up the job. Also, Bloodstock gets replaced by Lemue's Slice, which you press after pressing two speed buttons. And the fifth button that you press in Enshroud is not ranged EI Jutsu if you're level 90. Ooh, shiny. That's enough of the basics to bore you to tears and explain other things later as they become relevant. Time to teach you an example opener by mentioning a skill that I didn't tell you about. Pre-pull with Soul So sometime before combat because it's going to charge it up for free. Some people like to pre-pull with Harp about 2 seconds before combat. You can do that if it makes you feel better. But I, on the other hand, like gap closing in as soon as combat starts and just slapping the boss immediately. If I wanted the pre-pull with spells, I'd play a caster. Upon actually starting combat, use Shadow of Death and immediately weave Arcane Circle. Then press Soul Slice. You know what? I like that so much. Do it again. This is as good as time as any to snort some coca cola. Then press Plentiful Harvest. Then weave the Nitro. Speed button 1. Speed button 2. Weave Lemure Slice. Speed button 1. Speed button 2. Weave Lemure Slice. And then cast Communio and weave Gluttony. Press a Gibbet and then press a Gallows, or you can do it the other way around, I'm not your parent. Then weave Not Bloodstock and press another blue button. That's it. You did it. You survived an example opener. But guess what? There's always more openers out there, somewhere in the ether, probably on Discord if you want to learn more. Is there stuff in this opener that I didn't explain earlier? Of course. Arcane Circle is a DPS buff with a bunch of text afterwards that just says, if team click buttons, it charge up Plentiful Harvest, which is the only button that will give you 50 blue pills to immediately enshroud. Could you condense those into one button? Don't ask questions. Solso turns into Not Stardew Valley after charging it up, which is actually a ranged filler skill if you need to get away from the boss for a mechanic. Yeah, that's a thing that exists. You can charge it up if you can stand still during forced downtime, so maybe once every expansion. If you already used Harvest Moon once and you still need a ranged filler for some reason, you have Harp, which is a spell with a cast time. But it becomes an instant cast spell if you used your gap closer before it. Even though the button lights up, it doesn't do additional damage. This is why I had to learn to read tooltips. You can also teleport back to where you just gap close from with another button. And there's also Not Third Eye, which you can set up before taking raid-wide damage and give your team a regen. That had to be nerfed because it was unironically dummy strong. It is still pretty decent though. Should I talk about AoE? I'm not too sure. I don't get to say my favorite line because everything is a lame gain on three. Boo. Boo. Shitty number. Should have been two. Look at AoE death design and AoE and shroud. Yeah, that sure is a thing. Just like how Soul Scythe is an AoE Soul Slice. Try saying that plus Soul So ten times fast. It's cool to build up resources with circle AoEs and then do all your burst damage in a cone. Can't wait for that to be taken away in a future update. 
Every time something dies with shadow of death on them, you get 10 red, and if you get a kill streak of 5, that's a predator missile. Look, my point is that AoE on Reaper is about as straightforward as it gets. I am confident in your ability to use those skills in dungeons and not only single target every single thing to personally spite me. Just don't forget to use that free Solso in between trash pickup because why not? It's free. Everything before this is Dublos, though. Welcome to Lego territory. How to double in Shroud. It's in Shroud, but you press it twice. If you try to slam two Communios yourself in your two minute buffs, you might notice a bit of a problem. If you use in Shroud right after Arcane Circle, you're not going to have it back up after you press Plentiful Harvest. And if you use it earlier, you have to weave Arcane Circle in the middle of Enshroud, which actually isn't that bad. But you still don't get to put your full Enshroud inside of raid buffs. But thankfully, in the dark web of the internet, in an abandoned Google document that is still maintained because it's from the balance, there lies a secret, forbidden technique to land two full Enshrouds inside of your Arcane Circle with 100% consistency. Click buttons normally for the first minute and 30 seconds of combat, making sure that your dot doesn't fall off and making sure that you don't overcap on resources and press things on cooldown. When Arcane Circle has less than 30 seconds remaining, you want to let your dot get real close to falling off. Just trust me on this one. Make sure to use up all your charges of soul slice because we're not going to be using them. Save up at least 50 red and blue. Right as Arcane Circle is about to hit 5 seconds remaining on cooldown, press in Shroud. And then press Death Design. Twice. No. And then weave Arcane Circle and let it rip. No. Now when you finish your first in Shroud and press Plentiful Harvest. No. Oh look, in Shroud is back up. No. And Gluttony is ready to weave right when you would want it after your second communion. Why? Just why? Who even wants to play the game like this? Let me return to the fucking Hunter's Nightmare. It's not only stupid, it doesn't flow well, and it makes me want to vomit. So naturally, after learning this, you're going to wonder, is this setup actually bad for some reason? The only way it's a loss is if you kill the boss before your death's design falls below 30 seconds. And even then, it's only a very slight potency loss and has everything to do with kill time optimizations. It's only truly awful if you missed an entire enshroud for the encounter because you held on to it for too long. If you are going down the path of kill time optimizations though, you don't want to refresh the dot twice and only use it once and then enshroud early and miss part of it outside of your last arcane circle use. Always remember traveler that better parse equal better player equal better person. We literally use Death Design to just waste 5 seconds after pressing in Shroud so that it comes back up after Plentiful Harvest. Also so that you don't overcap on resources if you try to save up all 3 in Shrouds. You either know the trick, or you don't. And once you know the Eldritch knowledge, you're going to wish that you never heard it. This is my only actual complaint about Reaper and not just personal preference. Are we supposed to be able to double in Shroud, or not? Right now, it feels like the devs are saying to us, Hmm, you can double in Shroud if you find a way to make it work. Well, how about you pick a side? Either make in Shroud a 10 second cooldown or make it like 25. It's either easy to double in Shroud by just pooling purple or it's impossible. For a job like this where it's not meant to be hard to understand, this just doesn't fit in with anything else. <sighs> and if you use this setup, it's going to drift gluttony by 3 seconds every complete rotation. Huh? Now if you want to go into the even stupider optimizations, I did allude to this, it is possible to land 3 communios under a pot buff at the 2 minute mark with an even more annoying in shroud and pot setup to make it work. I'm not going to tell you the details about how to set that up, because that is some theoretical level physics play and even too nerdy for nerds. But we did pot in the opener in this guide and not at the 2 minute mark, so which one is better? The correct answer is that there are way too many variables that would determine what pot placement is better for overall DPS on that specific pole of a specific boss. This includes everything from kill time, encounter mechanics, your execution, the boss's credit score, Yoshi P's digestive system, the number of sunspots that day, and the Dewey decimal system. Even then, we're talking about the difference between like a 99 and a 99 but shinier. The fact that this is what people talk about on Reaper is proof that there is not anything better to do. Well, that's gonna be it from me on Reaper. It looks cool and some people like going fast. It's me. I'm some people. It's just not the job for me. My only real gripe is that playing it better 
genuinely feels like a dumpster fire. Except that's how I feel about pretty much any optimization in this game, so I guess it's not that different. I don't care if I don't enjoy a job though because I have other jobs that I can play to entertain myself until they get reworked into something that I don't like. Now let's get out there and be depressed about downtime. I'm sure Reaper feels great in Thornton Ultimate.